how's it going? Where's, where's chat at? Where's, where's chat? chat? I've got chat right here. Okay. I like Discord. Hello, everybody. It's time for a little help where we give you a little help on music production, composition, creation, and uh, our ongoing series on Ableton Live. Yeah. How's everyone doing today? We got a click track going, moving us along. It's that, that standard tempo that everyone needs in their life. 102.58 BPM. Very specific. Yeah. You don't mess around here. Oh, look, it's people. People. Hey, people. What? Man, all these people showed up. Darmo, Gabrielle, we are starting a thing. Mr. Mad Brain. Yo, yo. Yo, everyone. Um, so... Does anyone in chat remember where we left off last week, what we were talking about? I have a vague memory of this. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. An NES dude, you have a crown? How did you get this crown? I don't know. Is that an Amazon or a Twitch Prime thing? People. People. Hi, Dymo. Mr. Madbrain. We've got, our, got a lot of our, our old regular friends here today. That's great. I am part Ableton, part man. I can I need a green <laughs> shirt. I it's... have a green shirt. I need more green shirt. My shirt is almost as blue as your shirt. I'm trying to like Twitch <clears throat> Prime, yeah. Twitch Prime. That's the that's the way to be. That's the way to be. So what have we got in store today? Where did we leave off yet? Uh last week. I wonder if I have a project saved. Like if I have the presence of mind to like go, oh yeah, this is what we were doing. But it ooh, looks like I'm not record. that smart. Recore. I think ooh, Recore is a beat that I was working on while Let's Robbie was got. playing Recore. Let's see what we got. Um, what? Whoa. Whoa. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to make myself bigger. We're going to feed back audio from something. Or, ooh. I am large. Yeah. I just had to use my. Uh, That's a good trick. Telekinesis to make <laughs> us bigger. Um, so let's hear this because I don't know what it is. Hey, let me get that sound checked, chat. This reminds me. Prime. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Alright. Chat, just let me know if you can feel the flow. Can y'all hear this? Because that way we can continue. Can they see us at all? I can see us. There are eight folks here. I'm not one of those folks. Alright. Anyway, that's funky. So, no. Uh, oh, I swear there's a feedback loop happening somewhere. Let's have a check. Uh, whoa. I don't know what it is. That is a like, demonic Halloween drone. Oh, that's this thing. This is my, uh, my organ patch. V3V. Oh. Probably has its delay feedback, which isn't even on. Is it you? It is. <laughs> this is good for the Halloween season, you know? Oh, it's that um, time. Yeah, it's the spooky Dude. time of the year where Walgreens puts out witches and Santa hats at the same time and <laughs> the vice presidential candidates debate each other on TV. Uh, it's the scariest season of all. I'm, I'm truly creeped out. All right. So, let's have a look at my folk. Who's hanging out? So, I believe we were talking about MIDI clips. We were talking about launch types. That's right. Um, Last time, I think we were just kind of um, sort you... of explaining the value of session mode and how these columns and rows uh, work in terms of launching full sets of things. That's right. We had our, like... I've got like a, a DJ gig out. coming up in a few weeks that Ooh. i got to prep a bunch of, of anime tracks for. So I'm going to be using session mode a lot when that happens. 
So, I mean, are, do you have a grid controller? Are you going to be going on the grid? I will. I I'm going to use the... my launch pad. Oh, that's why I zoomed in. My mirror vision is terrible. <laughs> okay. Whew. Launch pad if I were to load in a track, is there a way to turn the sound wave into the audio effect so I can see how things are built? So reverse, are you talking about like, uh, Dime, that's Dimo's first question of the day. Are you talking about like reverse engineering the audio? Like you load the audio in and you can see how everything was mixed a long time ago? Or are you opening up, say, an Ableton Live track that you've mm. obtained? Because if you're looking at the session file or the project file, yeah. yeah, you can see everything that's in there. But with audio, if it's like a mixed audio file, like if I download the Evangelion theme song, and open it up, I'm not going to be able to see uh, what effects or compression chains or whatever don't you might wish? have been attached to that. I mean, also, that was, <laughs> that was uh, 20 years ago, so right. I doubt there were even computers being used. But... They for using audio live. files, you're really only be able to see the print of that audio as it was finally produced. It's kind of, uh, think of it as like kind of an etching in a tablet or something like that. But what you can do with that audio is then you can, um, you can kind of um, play with it. You can toy with it in Ableton uh, to maybe slow it down, for example, and hear certain effects or certain things as they go. So. Um, it's a really good trick to actually slow something down if mm -hmm. you want to maybe listen critically for certain effects that are being used or certain chord progressions or something like that. So uh, the warp tool, which we looked at a little bit last week, yeah, uh, but... which is the most useful tool in Ableton, in my opinion, that lets you uh, that that engine basically lets you slow something down uh, to even half time or super slow, and then that might give you an idea of, like, what kinds of effects are being used here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but reverse engineering a track is pretty difficult um, yeah. from an audio level. Um, it takes, like, a of, lot of knowledge of what they were able to make it with, yeah, right? Yeah. And, like, <clears throat> trying to recombine these elements that they, you know, could have only had at the time. Um, that said, yeah. uh, Melodyne does have some interesting... Um, interesting audio isolation features where they have more or less been able to pick certain voices out of a, a mixed audio track and then you can um, you know kind of pluck them out from there particularly useful if you need to extract vocals from a finished mix which is notoriously difficult um, you reminded me of actually a neat new feature for Ableton mm -hmm. that um, that does something like this this might be this might be kind of helpful in so, terms of what we're looking at. Let's see if I can find something that's like I'm looking for a particular something that's like really melodic. Some straightforward beef and explosive. Spooky that way. Oh maybe. Is it is it really spooky? Oh, this isn't a video recently. I have no idea whose stuff it is. So you can drag an audio file to a MIDI track and it gives you these options of um is this a harmony that you're trying to extract, a melody, or drums? And, I don't know, let's see how well it does with the melody, right? It might be more useful when you're dealing with a monophonic file. Oh, sure. Particularly for melody, but let's see what this does to a final mix track. I mean, let's see, what is it? I need an instrument up in here. How about something like, uh, I don't know, analog? Piano? Yeah. Oh, piano. There's just all these things. No pianos. I'm just kidding. Um, it's a regular old. What are you? It's a piano. Regular. It's almost like a piano. <laughs> so. It's actually not bad. Yeah. If you listen back to the reference, like. I'm actually impressed. Now what happens if you do the same track, do the chord uh, treatment of it? Ooh, all right. Let's make a new MIDI track. Let's get something that's like... No, it's, it's the spooky again. Try the chord mode. Oh, okay, okay. Good idea. I want to see what happens with the same file just being treated differently if we look at the harmonies and then the drums. Same story. Well, drums are kind of crazy because you can do... Uh... You can like beatbox into your laptop and it'll 
derive. Give you a MIDI. Yeah, it'll give you a MIDI. It's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, this so, is a nice feature. What's this sound like? Oh. What's this feature called? Do we know? Oh, that's really good. That is really good. It's hearing the chords. It's actually hearing the rhythms and the chords. Yeah. And their qualities, and it's giving you something to work with right out of there. So it generates this data. So Dymo, this sounds like what you're gonna want to uh, pull out. This kind of drag and drop feature on uh, audio to MIDI conversion in Ableton. Now it's not going to disassemble all the effects chains or or give you a full picture of how the track is composed. For that, you still need to listen really carefully to it. Start right. maybe charting what the different elements are. But this is a good place to start. It gives you the building blocks, basically. I'm really impressed, actually, by Let's this. Let's see what the drums do. I want to put this. Can I make a can I make a new MIDI thing just to put drums? Yeah. Like a drum yeah, rack. Yeah. Like I don't know. Well, that's audio, though. Oh, that's okay. Well, I need a MIDI. The difference between Command T and Shift Command T is mm. only so much. Still spooky, so. Getting a lot it's of. It's so creepy. I like it. It's so audio to MIDI. Yeah. That's a very difficult conversion to make. So this and, is yeah, it's like really of, new technology too. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, haven't seen anything this good than like this version of Ableton <laughs> at it. So yeah. uh, you're in luck on that. But it isn't going to give you like a perfect MIDI adaptation of it. Oh, we're gone <laughs> now. Oh, it's so spooky. I want there's like a drum. There's an analog drum that's really good. Whatever. Oh, here we go. Let's get a Lindrum. That's was that fun. was that a third of shaft? Just, yeah. <laughs> All right, there we are. We're tiny uh, again. All right. So let's go back to our audio folder. Uh huh. And let's make a spooky drum track. Wait, wait. No, I didn't get to choose. I don't and know. And this is I don't Ableton Live did. Nine, correct? This is Ableton Live Nine. Yeah. So to use this feature, you would just create a new MIDI track and then drag the audio file from your file browser over here onto the MIDI track rather than onto an audio track or audio channel. It's all right. <laughs> um, the tempo is off, but... Interesting. I mean, does it fit the other MIDI that it generated? That's, that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> does seem like it fits. What a weird feature. Yeah, so this is Ableton does this Live match 9. match our click track, though? Oh, heck no. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. So, is that maybe because we didn't uh, warp that audio file first? What I usually do when I'm working, like I want to keep the sample rate of a thing, is I'll play the demo, like I'll play this thing, mm -hmm. and then I have a hotkey set up. Um, if you press Command K, mm -hmm. you can tap tempo. Oh, and, damn! And so I have. Um, That's useful. Underneath the escape key on my keyboard, or next to the the number one, I have little tilde, little tilde backwards apostrophe. Yeah, key. upward, upward, or backwards dash or whatever. So what I can do is tap while I'm listening to the sample. Nice. And let's mute these because those are gonna play after a couple of hits. I'm gonna set that up on all my sessions. How do I do that right now? <laughs> oh sure. So what you're gonna want to do, um, there are two different ways to do mappings in, um, uh -huh. in live. If you have a controller, you press Command M, and all these purple things show up, and you can select a region or a feature. Um, there I am. Oh, I've done this before. But if you press my Command, very first exposure to Ableton, yeah. for anyone at home with a MIDI keyboard, if you don't have one of these launch pads or anything like that, but you have a, a standard MIDI keyboard no. of any kind, and you've got like a knob on it you don't want, Command M turns everything purple like this, and then you can actually just click on the thing, right? And then do whatever you yeah, whatever you want to do, like uh, click on it and then like turn the knob or something like that. And that'll map that controller to that. So my first toes getting wet experience with Ableton, I just did that with like my crappy MIDI keyboard from 10 years ago and it worked. It's the way to go. We can talk about mapping at length. There's uh, quite a few things you can do. But uh, yeah, but sorry, let's go, go to... back to my question. So command K. <laughs> Is, is a keyboard mapping. So much uh, like we have the MIDI keyboard that you can play, um, mm -hmm. like this thing, if you press Shift Command K, and then like I have, uh, let me stop playing this this guy. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've pressed Shift Command K, or I can press this little keyboard button up here in the top right, mm -hmm. 
And I can use the middle row. We kind of went over that before. Um, nice. To play key, keys, like if you don't have, you know, your controller at the library or whatever. Um, so that same kind of functionality, you can apply it to other things that Ableton does. So cool. like by default, there are, there are keyboard you know, shortcuts like I think F9 is play and like armed record or like, uh, you know, space is obviously play. Yeah. But I've set up a bunch of keyboard shortcuts to get me around Ableton. As you can see, I've got F over here for follow arrangement. I have capital R and lowercase r. So that actually is different if you're like, I don't have enough keys. Oh, yeah, right? that's very but useful. To stay on topic, um, oh. <laughs> here is the uh, tap the tempo one. button. And so I mapped that over here to this guy, whatever that is, key dash. Key um, uh, under escape. Right. <laughs> um, or tilde. It's or tilde. The, or the not tilde key. It's the not tilde. It's not <laughs> right. the shift tilde. But... And so now I can tap out a tempo, and That's it'll pick great. that up, and we're good to go. I think I have T set up as well. T is maxing out the tempo right now. Basically, that's just bad mapping. So if you want to get rid of a mapping, you can select it here, or you can select it inside of this mapping area, and just press backspace or delete, depending on your platform, and you're nice. good to go. That's great. So I have keys for enabling and disabling the metronome. I have keys for arming and recording. I have keys for... So Ableton like doesn't let you do... The older versions of Ableton allowed you to dub MIDI um, using this feature right here. If we go get our helper buddy back, you can do um, MIDI arrangement overdub. So that's like while I'm recording maybe a new clip, um, I can record... Uh, that's some bad, some bad stuff. It's a hardcore sound. But beep, now that I can boop, record beep, beep, over beep, that. Beep, 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 beep. Um, if I press this button, uh -huh. oh, that's the session record button. Hold on a sec. Shift R will allow me to session record. Mm -hmm. I can play while that's session recording and play MIDI into this channel, right? So that's something that you could have just done before in the older versions of Ableton, and it's something that you can just do if I'm editing the same thing here. I have a shortcut key F. Uh, let me turn off this keyboard shortcut thing. That'll bring me back to the arrangement. If I want to get this guy over here into that view, I like hold on or click and hold, and press tab, and blam, that guy's there. And so then we can kind of do traditional overdubbing. As long as this additional button is active, then I can go to the beginning of the track, record. Oops, I have to. So now I can kind of stack MIDI, and um, it's totally tilde. Well, it's the tilde key, but it's not the tilde that we're mapping to it. It's the grave uh, accent. Oh, you know, I've seen, accent. I've seen that um, in like a oh, in like a bash tutorial or accent. something like that. The grave accent, the exactly. Grave. I've seen that in the bash tutorial because you need it for specific, like whether you're assigning, mm -hmm. like you want to put a command inside of a command or whatever. Yeah, the grave <laughs> accent is also the uh, the accent on the e in Michelle's name. Oh, the dog. Michelle. She has so an is accent. It is it Shell? It's Michelle. Oh, I see. It's a grave kind of like, I guess it's like French. It kind of kills the word in a way. It's used in the. It's used in French. It's not used very often in other languages, uh, mm. but it does. Um, it does occur in, in, mo in modern Italian, too. So did we talk about like launch types and follow types for clips? Launch types and follow types. Yeah. I don't know. Because um, we got kind of into notes. We went through most of these, like how to scale time. Um, we actually did this with audio and not with MIDI, um, which is... A darn shame. It's a crying shame. Do I have any weird audio tracks? I don't know. What do you guys want to learn? Well, uh, Dymo said they had a track they want to convert to MIDI in the audio track. Uh, kind of what we were just doing. So, All right. Um, well, I'd recommend maybe setting your tempo to be as close to that uh, audio file as possible so that you don't have Ooh, yeah. any unusual surprises when you drop it in. Well, you can like warp and consolidate it, right? Like, get the section that you want. What's a good way to get that MIDI to reflect w the tempo of the audio? Because we kind of got to tell Ableton what that tempo is, right? So let me set my tempo back up. 
Um, excuse me. Boop, you. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so we have to tell Ableton what the tempo is, but in order to kind of go from quantized audio to quantized MIDI, I think is kind of the way to go. Mm -hmm. So if I have my tempo here, it's 100 BPM. Kind of hear that click going. And here's uh, your cue volume. Okay. So we can, you know, I turn it down because I don't need to hear that over something I'm previewing. But let's find a... Uh, Let's find a good. Uh, let's find a good thing. I downloaded a bunch of Japanese pop. I'm not gonna go through that right now, <laughs> but as much as I want to, just start sampling the hell out of it. We'll wait. I need to find something that we can. Oh, do I have a loop that's like very minimal? Hmm. Okay, Dima's running into a problem when I drag it into the MIDI track to audio. Hmm. Is that? Dragging a MIDI track into an audio thing. It looks like it's. Oh, it turned the MIDI. It turned, it turned the audio that MIDI track, track, into, track into an audio track. I turned that. MIDI Let's track. look up a solution. Hold on a sec. I see something that's. I'm sick of you. I want, uh, I don't know, I could make an audio. Do you think it's track. something that has to be enabled first, or? I don't think so. I've never, you know, I've, it's only gotten in my way when I wasn't expecting to, you know, to, to use it. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, so that's a loop. So we're going to take this audio track, drag it to, I mean, I guess you could also right click it, right? You can convert harmony, melody, or There drums. we go. So if you're having trouble with the drag and drop it? feature, we can try uh, we can try this right click mode. Exactly. Yeah. Unexpected eighty eight is absolutely unexpected. <laughs> Expectedly correct. <laughs> Expectedly correct. That's true. Um that's definitely easier than trying to go through their gestural yeah. type of maneuvers. Now keeping but, in mind this is still a pretty this is still a pretty basic technology. It's not going to give you a perfect conversion. Oh, and it's not gonna break no. it out into every voice or give you an idea of how it was arranged or composed. It's just gonna give you some of the building blocks that might be useful. So I think that if it's like something that loops, like an audio track that loops, like if you listen to this sample, it was gonna do a pretty good job of basic beats, something that's minimal when you're not trying to take it out of a full song, right? Yeah, this feature is going to be the most useful when you're dealing with relatively simple tracks and loops, yeah. beats, things that you might want to extract. If you take a beat from a pop song, for example, convert that to a MIDI track, then make it your own drum samples. I mean, I really think it's designed for alternate input type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have a MIDI controller. Or, shoot, I can't even play piano. But I can hum the but tune. I can, I can spit right. into my computer's microphone. I can nope. spit at my computer, <laughs> and I can sing at my computer, and it will probably turn out an okay MIDI file that I can then tweak. All right, and we went over, we went over piano roll tweaks uh -huh. and just keyboard flow type of stuff early on. And don't be shy. Ask me to do something again. I I ain't scared. I don't scared of nothing. Oh, look, we have a nice little bug over here. Is it animated? Can I... Oh, it's the other side. Can I grab it? Oh! Stay on the couch, otherwise your arm will be destroyed. <laughs> um, so where to, dude? Where I mean, to, indeed. I want to say... I think launch types, especially in session view, are really important. All right, let's cover that fundamental then. All right. I could use a little I could use a little coaching on this myself. Sometimes awesome. I remember how this works and sometimes I don't and I uh end up screwing up the launch of something I'm trying to DJ seamlessly. DJ seamless. DJ so, seamless, that's my <laughs> It's like I only wear two tops. Um and two bottoms. Someone is already named DJ Seamless. They are from <laughs> Brooklyn, so I will <laughs> Uh, we'll give up on that name. Oh, this is a track. Hey, there is. we go. Let's take the snack time audio loop. I wrote, I wrote this little ditty. Yeah. For snack time. I'd love to extract out its parts and see what it Let's looks like. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> see what happens. 
So let's make uh, the harmony do a new At MIDI the very track. least, I know we own this song. <laughs> oh, that's true. How has that ever become a problem for anybody? What do you... <laughs> true. <laughs> oh, gosh. You have all the stems to this, don't you? I do, yeah. So we could, uh, we could also drag the stems in here and play with them. True. Um, where did I put those things? Do -do -do. This, is, this is just the audio? You made a loop out of it? I made, I extracted it to a harmony hear... MIDI track. Nice, let me hear it. Let's see how it does. <laughs> cool. So, <laughs> so trigger mode is like a type of latch in a way. You turn it, you turn it on, and it goes. You turn on legato. It takes forever. No, it's. It, I think it's supposed to switch. I want to see. Can I just? Do I have that button here? Mm -hmm. There's a um. Yeah, here. So gate mode Ooh. is uh, you can launch this trick. You can launch this button just like this. Are those the words to snack time? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Posting the lyrics to snack time in the in the chat there. So gate is a good like if you have a grid controller um way to have a punch in type of audio <laughs> effect. And as long as you hold it down, it'll oh. play through. And then you let go, it stops. Huh. Right? So that's way useful. Gate mode, huh? Toggle, so, huh? Uh, yeah. If I have that loaded uh -huh. on a column there and I gate it, uh -huh. uh, it's going to let me trigger that in the middle of a mix, right? Yeah. So if we pull in, well, let's DJ this. Let's pull in like some, some shitty house beat or something. Uh, sure. Show me how this works with other tracks that are playing. That's good. Drum and bass is always, always fun. All right, so All let's right. get rid of that guy. So, so this is not looped. Let's loop it. Oh, it's going too quick. It now, that software is not set up to be gated. I don't think this loop is warped. No, it's not. That's why I that's why I make my own loops. Oh, I see. So that they line up. <laughs> um I don't know. That. So this is like where's Nort? Where's Nort's cute as hell? It's in exports. I know that much. Whatever. I need something else, man. Borrowed. Oh yeah, sure. This is what I was talking about yesterday. Um, <laughs> so let's loop this guy. Okay. Warp, loop, how long is this? I think it's two bars. Two bars? Let's find out. Hold on there. Yeah. That's right. Third eye, you guys, you guys know, what do you guys know about third eye blind breaks? <laughs> Very little. <laughs> Very little. All right, so what we have to do now in order to get this to behave the way we expect it to, mm -hmm. actually, let's bring this back up too. So I can also set a keyboard shortcut up for that clip. So I press oh. I. Right? Nice. And you can play it freely because there isn't an input quantization on, but I believe if I want it to be, you know, quarter notes or eighth notes, or sixteenth, right? Now it's gonna stick to the the metronome. It's too loose for me. Do it tighter and speed this up. This is in the shuffle. So you know. That kind of works. So it quantizes the on and off um, of that gate launch. I wonder if Legato will help me at all. You 
you guys shift down it's pretty funky uh what else can we do with this thing velocity follow action this is kind of where things get weird and what i wanted to highlight kind of uh last time when we got going let's do it not available in the light version i got something that is available in the light version gosh darn it and that's, well, that's the audio to MIDI is not available right, in the live right. version to be specific. A little bit of a bummer. Yeah, it is. So follow action after a bar. Follow action has a duration, right? If I trigger this, I can say after one bar, I can go to the next. Um, I believe that's how that works. Um, and I have to stop, I think. So that way this will only play once. No? One out of one times? How do you do this? Can we get that menu going? Where's my helper, buddy? When a follow action takes place, place in bar beats 16 from the point where the clip starts. So halfway through, what are you doing? Oh, chance A. Chance A. So I what? guess two different follow actions can happen. Huh? What? Well, this is a little advanced. Yeah, this so. is kind of nuts. There's basically a way to trigger each following clip. Oh. And it should preview like when it gets launched, what it's going to do. So notice how this one's playing, but the but the stop button below that track is going to is is blinking so it's not going to play through the entire beat the follow action instead will go ah, all right i'm good ah so this is way useful if for example you have different sections of a song that you know the distances of or you want to play a couple of parts in sequence i can instead of you know play this i can instead of uh well, am i even selecting the correct correct thing so each clip has a follow action. So for the first bar, it'll jump to the second part, which is just the second half of that beat. And then after that, it'll stop. Right? So it prepares the next track, and then it plays the second half of that beat, and then it stops. And so in terms of setting up crazy live DJ stuff, I mean, it's pretty disturbing. But yes, this is probability. <laughs> Pro the probabilistic... Uh, cellular sequencer is pretty disturbing. I highly recommend it. Uh, peace out, Dima. Sorry about not seeing you this week too much. But this is, um, this is fun. I'm not sure. Let's see what this is about. I don't know. Use your friend. 100% the softest notes to play. Oh, so you can actually apply velocity of your, like, launch pad input to that entire MIDI clip. Hmm. Or I guess the volume of that track. Interesting. So that's pretty vo that's pretty volatile. That's pretty. Um, we did transposition. We did micro tuning. Um, do we talk about envelopes at all? Do we talk about that? Like a little bit, but um, let's go through the different launch modes. Sure. I mean, there really aren't that many. I mean, what do we have uh, after trigger? We've so got we went over gate. Trigger gate toggle repeat. Right. So repeat is it seems pretty self-explanatory, right? Kind of, but I need to know, like, how it differs from, say, looping something. Um, that's a great question. Offhand, I have no idea, let's so I'm going to have out. to try it. <laughs> so let's say that this third one will play the first one after two hours. <laughs> Salute. Or stop sneezing. Did you mute yourself? That's I slick. Right wow. It's really allergic season right now. So could you set up a bunch of trigger points in one audio track and map them to a pad or keyboard, etc.? Says Garian. So I, the thing is, uh, if I understand you correctly, yes, you could do this. What you do is you basically see we have these three different, um, we have these three different clips of the same clip, right? Mm -hmm. So what you could do is you could set the start point of each one of these as a different one, and then using these three buttons, map them to start at different places. I do this a lot if I've got, say, a drum loop from a song and mm. I want to transition into the song. 
Yeah. So like uh, everything from Perfume, for example, like every single song yeah. uh, that Yas Nakata produces. Uh, spoiler alert, I DJ a lot of J-pop. So everything Nakata produces has some really good uh, outros, some really good loops, some really good right. beats that you can loop. And then if you have something kind of looping long term, let's say I want to um, bring this beat in to transition to perfume, you know, spending all my time. It's got this like uh, this chord progression that's really iconic mm. to the song, but I want to loop it over the end of the last song that I'm playing or yeah. something like that. So that might look like these three tracks up here. You see the I want you up there. That might look like three versions of that. And what I've done on each version is I've dragged the start marker or the start point uh, in that audio window right there. Mm. The left triangle, let's say. This guy. Or the loop point. I've right. dragged that over to start at a specific place. And so... Um, what is this guy? So that's kind of my, it's kind of my preferred... Uh, method of doing it just because it's immediately accessible and mapped to the board. Right. And you can set after a certain number of... So the duration here doesn't actually have to be... Like, if you want to set it and go to another page of your set, um, the duration here does not have to match um, the actual duration of your... Um, I'm sorry, I'm so just facing out. It doesn't have to match the duration of the loop. You can make it so that it plays this... Um, so that the follow action is, you know, four or five times longer. Mm -hmm. If I'm playing this beat, let's nice. see, after two measures, it's already one measure long, but I can make this go on for four measures if I want to, like, have that time to build up and, like, give myself controller space to, like, do mm -hmm. a filter sweep or make other adjustments. Um, I can get that going. And it'll take four passes. So that's three, mm -hmm. right? And then four, and then it'll go back to the top where it's slow. Nice. Right? And so in the time I have a whole bunch of flexibility to do a ton of things. Yeah. Um, including like, uh, you know, oh, it's uh, the crowd's doing this. Like DJing is a very, it's a very like, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a shepherd type of occupancy, right? Yeah. Like you have some of a plan, you know the music that they're interested in, but you're also going to be, you know, riding that wave of energy with them. That's kind of what the art's about. What's a good way to maybe have a loop and then have that loop go on to the full song? Oh, sure. So intro loops are a great way to bring a song in. <laughs> you, you know you're going to make me like put some of that Japanese pop up here. Oh, go for it. <laughs> also, I really need your help on this because I got a big set okay. in like two weeks. And I well, the, know uh, Ableton enough to get through it, but yeah. I don't know Ableton enough to like really like squeeze as much out of it as I'd like to. I mean, I've done some sets in the worst of conditions, but I will but Ableton, if if you're if you're careful, will do will treat you right. Oh, it does. So let's go to my downloads. Sure. Where I may or may not have some downloads with with that I don't have the name loop in them. Um <clears throat> so we've been checking out Akikoyama today. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Oh my god. Really into this. I'm so I'm so so sick in love with this with this lady. Um, Ableton does this weird thing where you have a large audio file that's not a wave. Like, it'll play whatever type of audio file, usually. Um, I need to find something that's not 500 years long. But Fun really fact, uh, huh? Yano Akiko's debut album was primarily recorded in Los Angeles. I'm going to marry her offspring. She doesn't live here, but she I didn't say here. anything about her. Okay. <laughs> no, it's truly, truly amazing. Apparently, she also uh, spent a lot of time in New York. Um, let's see. And what is, if I recall from last week, you can queue up your tracks with input quantize. Yes, that is correct. Garion, you can certainly do that. So what I'm going to do with this gigantic file of multiple tracks is we're going to pull one of them out and consolidate that. And then uh, I might as well do that first. Let's just go, go to where there's, go to where the audio is. Ugh, just like a smidge more. So I want to find one of these, one of these dudes. This is um, I just I'm telling you, I will. You tell me her earliest albums were recorded out here. Actually, quite a few of her albums are recorded out here. It might be the, it might be her go-to. So. Let's see, I need something kind of even. Also, she married uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto, 
Really? Yeah. Like the <laughs> godfather of all electronic music. This is weird. But they divorced in 2006 after having a daughter. Um, what of their Thank offspring? you, Wikipedia. <laughs> I need to know about... I need to know about how many daughters she has. Uh... No, no. For a friend. For a friend. Actually, uh, she is a daughter who is a famous pop singer. Perfect. Sakamoto Miyu. Sold. Um, all right. She is also the voice of a Vocaloid named Miyu. That is named after her. That ends up. So let's take this track from the Excite Me Full album. I'm going to press Command E to split the track, um, which for some reason doesn't show up in here, but it should, because it's an edit option. B -b Boom, split, command E. I'm gonna do the next thing on that list, consolidate. Consolidate is going to cro crop out all of the rest of this album um, for this particular instance of the sample. So hmm. the way that sampling works in Ableton is it usually references a file until you just want a small section of it, and that's usually for performance reasons. Um, and that's when Ableton will basically create its own little side file of it. Yeah. Now, it does that in the directory that it's uh, working in, correct? No. <laughs> no? It does it in the... In the, the project file directory? It does it in the application directory. Oh, weird. So on Windows, it'll do it in app data. And so if you convert a lot of MP3s um, in Ableton to eventually wave so that Ableton can work with that a lot more quickly, um, you have this effect where it just eats up your hard drive space. Go figure. So, let's take our cropped song, put it back here. Um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna rename this. That's a right click, you can rename. I like to do Command R. I do not need to edit the info text, although I will, you know, many, <laughs> many hearts. Um, I have no idea what the song's called. So we have the section at the beginning, right? Let's let's do a quick little trick to rough out the tempo. So, you know, you kind of listen to it for a minute, and then you use our tap tempo trick, right? Okay. And that's kind of weird because it'll kind of it'll slide out from under you. Mm -hmm. But just go with your go with your gut, because it's, what happens is that work that you put in. All right. So now I need to find one. Now one do, one do, issue do, I do. run into is when I'm dealing with the clip. The yeah. uh, tempo tap doesn't seem to be very friendly to me when I'm trying to get something to register, uh, say, for warp purposes, right? Right. So is tapping the tempo in one of these playthroughs going to give me what I need? It'll give you a good starting point. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you do is you can set one here, and then you go, okay, well, if that's one, the fewer warp markers at first, the better. Um so I can go from here, mm -hmm. if I know that this is down, the downbeat. Ooh, yeah. So now I'm off over there. So I can select this warp marker, and I can drag the BPM down. Now I've done this a little bit, but what I find is that um, sometimes it doesn't want to really drag that BPM for me. It acts weird. kind of weird, yeah. That is and I'm weird. wondering if that isn't because it's, like often I'll just kind of have to give up, start over, and like delete all the warp markers. Start over from yeah, scrap. you really, I, I, like I said, as few war markers as possible mm -hmm. at the in, at the beginning is going to save you a lot of heartache. Because if, if you insert warp markers and you keep adjusting the timing, oh, yeah. then that difference between warp marker to warp marker is going to get real squashy real yeah. fast. It tends to happen on older songs where there isn't a click track or where uh, the volume isn't maybe quite as easy to detect as with like a steady four on the floor kick. Right. Or the tempo, I should say, isn't as easy to detect. I mean, another way to kind of keep that in check, like I'll tell you right now, over here, maybe past the looping point that we mm -hmm. want to have, mm -hmm. like, this is not going to be in time. Yeah. And so what you'll do is maybe go out to the 16th bar and just recenter it. Sure. And you don't have to create a new warp marker. Mm -hmm. Like, just find... Uh, all right, so... Fun. Dun, 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 dun. And... If you drag it without creating a warp marker, what it does is it evenly stretches it instead of creating two warping zones. Oh. And so that's way more gentle and way more useful for... So, 
where do you where do you pick that up to drag it? I didn't quite see. I would just find somewhere down in you know in the song where it starts to trail off. Mm -hmm. But you drag it on the actual like. Oh yeah. Oh, where on the screen do we actually? So drag above it that the way? transients, like here, like mm -hmm. here's like scale, right? Mm -hmm. And then below that is the play. Got it. And right here is where you can set a warp marker. Yes. And so if you double click, it'll set a warp marker. But what you want to do is just single click and drag. So you hold it and right. it'll set a warp marker. And it'll That's actually super convenient. It, what it actually does is it refines this BPM. Nice. Like very very slightly. Um, which is super useful. That's really useful. And that's so, basically it's yeah. basically the visual version of slightly sliding that tempo marker until everything lines up. Mm -hmm. So now so I have nice. the second part of the song that I want to play after my intro. Cool. Maybe I'll turn that back a bit, just to after four bars. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm going to I'm going to go be fans of your offspring, Miss Miss uh, whatever. Yano Akito. Yano Akito. I'm, I'm completely disrespectful, but now I can loop this region. Yeah. And um, we're going to do a follow action where I'm going to play the next, not the last. I'm going to play the next clip for sure with our oh, probability she's, index. She's city pop. No oh. wonder. Oh, she's watching us right now. <laughs> so after this intro plays twice, and like let's do something fun even with this guy. I don't know. No, I'll just see. Does, see, does that even work? So now that's queued up, so I can play the intro loop. Nice. I can do it eight times. I can do it fifty times. I'll be here all week. And we can do this live. Like all of this time, so I'm stopping the audio. It's there's no there's no reason for that. So we're good to go. Yes, Gary is correct. She's released 27 albums. Of course she has. It's I'm like, ashamed I didn't know more about her before dude, today. We've been listening to her all day. So, it's so such good. good stuff. It's so so satisfying. If anyone, everyone, please uh, buy all 27 of uh, Akiko's albums. They're so good. I wonder if they're available on iTunes. I don't know. Let's find out. I, w I would buy them. So, now I have this loop going. They are available. Some of them are available on iTunes. And it's just, you know, this weird 8-bar groove. I can tighten up the groove live. Like, I can see this downbeat's coming a little bit late. We're good. Nice. And that's it. That's that's the that's the DJ that nobody respects. <laughs> well, I think it's about time for ADD drumming. Oh, yeah? I think you're right. Getting to be 6 p.m. I think so. So why don't sure. we why don't we call uh, launch modes the end of the show today? That's it. We'll come back and explore another feature next week in Ableton Live, and right. we will take uh take questions and uh. Give pointers as always on next week's little help. The, Thank you guys. The chill Tuesday the, hour. The chill, the <laughs> chill Ableton Tuesday hour. I'm so happy to see y'all. Thank you, chat. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned for ADD drumming with Brian Burwell, followed by Dog Tracks, also with Brian. Uh, we actually have a dog track today. We're gonna record live in an hour. Cool new drums for somebody's uh, lucky track. So keep your eyes on this stream. I'm keeping them there. I'm watching you stream. Someone needs to someone needs to fade us out of this stream. Oh look, there's a mint potion. And I think us. that someone might be you. Yeah, it's probably gonna be me. I'm gonna summon the I'm gonna summon the transition here. <laughs> use your use so, transition folks, with all your heart. Transition that magic out of transition the mint potion with your mind. Thank you, everybody. Transition. We'll be back next week. I'm learning lots about Ableton, and you will too. From our man, Ben Nix. See you later.